Hi, before we begin our green tea number one experience, let's take a moment, make yourself comfortable, and try to relax. Whether you're about to enjoy this tea by yourself, with company, in the morning, or after the sunset. We sincerely hope this experience can help rest and recharge your mind. If you never had loose leaf tea, the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear green tea is probably matcha, the Japanese tea powder, and a trendy flavor that has gone viral pretty much everywhere on Instagram. But if you have had loose leaf tea, chances are that you've heard of, or even had this tea somewhere. The tea has another name, Longjing, or simply Dragon Well. If you ask any Chinese tea drinkers, they will likely tell you that Longjing is unquestionably the number one green tea of all China, which it makes it likely the best damn green tea, period. That being said, not all Longjing were created equal. The thing is, just about any tea cultivator can make their variation of Longjing. But the most authentic and the finest Longjing is called Westlake Longjing. Westlake is this iconic park in Hangzhou, Zhejiang, a eastern province on China's coastline, known for pretty ladies, exotic water towns, and green teas. The park itself has been the centerpiece of countless poems and paintings since the Tang Dynasty. Yet, over a thousand years have passed, the park has remained the pride of the nation. But not every Longjing can be called Westlake Longjing. The park is a trademark protected area, so the tea has to be grown and made within the area to be named after Westlake, legally at least. But once again, like not all Napa wines are the same, not all Westlake Longjing share the same quality, reputation, or price tag for that matter. There are easily over a dozen tea villages inside the Westlake region, and only five of them are known for producing the highest quality Longjing. The tea in your cup came from Mei Jia Wu, one of the top five, who owns the most extensive tea gardens in the area. The village's history can be traced back to more than 600 years ago, and tea making has dominated most of it. The garden is located around 984 feet, or 300 meters above sea level, with the average temperature of 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 degrees Celsius. Most of the time, the area is covered with endless drizzles, so it's not uncommon to see humidity level rise over 85% for much of the year. Furthermore, the soil underneath the garden is mixed with white sands and loess, which provide a rich mineral content for the tea plants. Camellia sinensis is an evergreen plant, meaning that tea can be harvested pretty much any season of the year, in theory. However, one of the main reasons behind Longjing's astronomical demand and its ever-rising price has to do with its scarcity. Known for its outermost freshness, this tea is only harvested in spring. After the long winter has passed, tea trees begin to sprout, and those new buds are rich in amino acid and low in polyphenol, making them less bitter, astringent, and incredibly umami. The most expensive Longjing is harvested around late March and early April. For your information, your Longjing was picked on the 4th of April. To ensure maximum freshness, only one bud and one leaf are picked, whereas other teas tend to include the second, third, or even the fourth leaf. Apart from its scarcity and freshness, Longjing is also famous for its unique crafting process. Once hand-picked, the tea leaves are left to wither in the shade. This helps getting rid of excess moisture in the tea leaves, making them less grassy in flavors and less likely to break in the following handlings. The leaves are buds that are then transferred to large wok to be fried by hand. Here, we enter the climax of the entire process. 
for the next couple of hours, the tea makers have to continuously shake, press, toss, and rub the thin leaves against the walk, with almost their bare hands and a pair of cutting gloves. Remember, the walk itself can get up to 572 degree Fahrenheit, or 300 degrees Celsius. That's insanely hot, and this explains why most tea makers' hands are covered with a thick layer of blisters. But this ain't your everyday walk fry. Throughout the whole process, they have to pay close attention to every move they make, making sure all leaves are spread out evenly and pressed firmly against the walk. They also have to closely monitor the rising temperature of the leaves. When the leaves get too hot, they get burned, making them bitter and worthless. When the leaves are not heated enough, they will quickly oxidize and turn black, and lose their most sought-after freshness. But if things pan out correctly, well, that's when you have the world's best green tea. This can sound a little counterintuitive. But to slow down with tea, you first need to forget about slow down altogether. Instead, try to direct your full attention to the drink in your cup. If you're having trouble focusing, try close your eyes and take a deep breath before each sip. Feel the warmth of the cup and how that warmth traveling through your palms. Bring the drink to your nose. Take a gentle inhale, and feel the aroma enter your body. Take a small sip, savoring the tea in your mouth for a second before swallowing. Concentrating your mind on how the liquor swirls around your mouth. Does the tea taste fruity, floral, or grassy? Keep your awareness on the inside of your mouth and on your palate. Think of the warmth that's flowing through your body. Now, try to let go of any stress or tension in your mind and your body. Let go of the need to overanalyze or the need to think, and try to embrace the feelings from drinking this tea alone. It makes a strong impression of fresh green bean. That's rather iconic of Longjing. Most commonly described notes are roasted chestnuts, cashew, and sweet orchard. There is a third reason for Longjing's unrivaled status and prestige. For a long time, it was exclusively supplied to the Chinese royal family, and even nowadays. It's still practically impossible to acquire the highest quality Longjing from the market. There's one story about Longjing that's been widely told in China. It involves Qianlong, an emperor of the Qing Dynasty. The farmers were picking tea leaves when the emperor Qianlong arrived at Westlake for a visit. Feeling intrigued, he decided to join them. As he was there imitating the farmer next to him, one of his servants came and told him that his mother had fallen ill. Worried about his mother's health, he put the tea leaves inside of his pocket and left the garden in a hurry. It took him days to return to the Forbidden Palace, but as he entered his mother's room, she immediately asked him about the smell that was coming off of him. When he reached into his pocket. He was surprised to learn that the tea leaves had already withered and dried, and there were these alluring aromas that were emitting out of them. They brewed the tea, and immediately fell in love with it. From that day, the emperor issued an official decree, which made sure that the best Longjing would be exclusively supplied to the royal family. Towards the end of this recording. I would like to take a moment to say just about how thrilled I am to be a part of a tea experience. We spent nearly a year building Good Slow, from finding the best teas to designing a meaningful slow down experience, down to every single part and website page. This tea experience was recreated from one of our personal visits to a tea house here in San Francisco. 
As my friends and I sat there, quietly sipping between different teas from those tiny little handmade clay cups, the owner kindly shared stories behind each of our drinks. Gradually, we developed a rare sense of connection between us and the tea leaves floating in our cups. We felt so relaxed and at ease. Ever since that day, we set out to recreate that experience for people to enjoy from the comfort of their own space. Whether you're drinking this from your home or your office, alone or with your loved ones, we hope it too has some effects on you. We hope that even just for a brief moment, the only thing that was on your mind was the tea in your cup. So now, you understand what it takes for the leaves growing on a tea tree somewhere in China to end up floating in your cup. <laughs>